How are you guys doing? This is Ryan. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than usual. I just really wanted to highlight a really awesome podcast that I did on a channel called The Rituation Room. The Rituation Room. I'm going to have his channel linked below. And I did a full hour length podcast with him. And I got to say, the guy's very professional, does an exceptional job organizing everything. And he made some really awesome clips that really highlighted a couple topics that we talked about. So what I wanted to do was just play those over here and give his channel exposure. It's a brand new channel. But when you see someone organize something so well and you think it has legs, I want to make sure other people pay more attention to that. He's getting a lot of great content creators on his channel. And a podcast is a different form than a YouTube channel. A YouTube channel, you get to make 10 minute videos and really try to summarize all your thoughts there. But when you have a nice long conversation, you can kind of better think through ideas. He put a clip of me really going in depth talking about Elon Musk and why I think it's silly to beat against him. And also the other clip really touches on cryptocurrency, specifically Bitcoin. Now in the longer version of the podcast, I, I say why not really bullish on Bitcoin itself, but why something like a non-sovereign currency asset would be attractive and really a bullish thesis for it. So I don't want to take up too much of the time, but watch these awesome clips. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and make sure you subscribe to his channel. And if you've not subscribed to my channel, uh, join it, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it, and let's hop into it. And I would definitely say Tesla is a tech company. I, I got so excited about the stock. Like I, I bought the Model 3. I was like, I have to own this car. Like I don't know why to buy any other car. And just, I'm so impressed with the self-driving features. I'm so impressed with uh, just the software updates and how much like my son loves it, like has video games in there. We play the Tesla every night. We go in there, we play racing games that are Tesla themed racing games. It's, it's insane. And now the way um, the tech is going to evolve with the energy, I'm really excited for a battery day when they announce this million mile battery where they, the company they bought out Maxwell, they're able to make the batteries more energy dense by using a uh, wet uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it wrong. Oh, no, wet electrode versus a, a dry electrode. I'm sorry, that might be the, the inverse, but they're changing it. And they're willing to warranty the batteries for a million miles, and because these batteries are so durable, that they're gonna you're gonna be able to do what's called auto bidder. My Tesla's plugged in right now. I'm buying energy from the grid tonight. It's set to start at 12 o'clock at night. I'm gonna buy energy so I can power my vehicle. But with the new battery, I could then plug it back in during the day and sell it back and make a profit. Every single day, I can own my car for nothing. Why would you buy any other car? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an F-150 owner right now, and I keep joking with my wife that, that I'm trying to ride this thing out for another hundred thousand miles, then I'm buying a Cybertruck. Like, there's, there's no other way to go. So, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Tesla. Um, a few things I did want to ask. Obviously, the company itself is like none other. I mean, and that really comes down to uh, Elon Musk just being such a different CEO in, in a lot of good ways. How do you feel? Um, I don't know how much you follow him as you know on a personal basis, but how do you feel about Elon Musk and the way he really has no filter and he's just going to say what he thinks he needs to say, whether it whether it helps or hurts? So Elon Musk is uh, a big like hero mentor of mine. I didn't buy his stock until it was hated. I, I always felt like it was hyped up previously, but I always followed him closely because I thought if this one guy can put rockets into outer space and revolutionize the car industry, I can make my chemical company do two million a year. Like I can, like he just made me think like anything was possible because of what everything he's able to accomplish. It's like, he's able to do all this, figure out rocket science. I can sell more chemicals, like I can. <laughs> so, and, and so I got so deeply involved in everything the guy's done from his first startup company, Zip2, and uh, PayPal with Peter Thiel, and like the dark times when Tesla and SpaceX were going nearly bankrupt during the 2008 financial crisis, and how he pushed through that, and how it's really not about money for him. Yeah, he's a, a huge billionaire, but if you sold PayPal and got $200 million, I might not go bet on rockets and electric cars. Like that's not a good investment. Like, no, I would have bought more real estate and cash flow or dividend stocks. So like, I wouldn't go all in on rocket ships. It's silly. <laughs> so I think that's um, very inspiring and very courageous and we need people like that. And that's why I couldn't help but get annoyed at Nikola Motors when this guy who Trevor Milton, who had a successful alarm company that sold for two million bucks, 
thinks he's the next Elon Musk. Like, no, you're on separate planets. So, and then he's just, you know, talking up his stock. And a lot of my videos recently have been talking about that. But yeah, I would definitely love to get a cyber truck and I might actually do it. Um, but I, some people don't like the aesthetics of it. You know, like the Badger looks really nice with, with Nikola and, and they'll probably sell some. But the guys out there are just saying, yeah, I'm gonna take down the F-150. I'm like, dude, you never even sold a car yet. Like I know you have all, you want to do all these things, but that's, that's silly. So anyways, that's my thoughts on Elon Musk. Yeah, I think the uh, I think the Badger just looks like a Toyota Tacoma with some fancy lights on the front of it. I'm really mm -hmm. not not too sold on it, but I did enjoy seeing how Elon was reacting um, within SpaceX with the last Falcon launch, and I think it kind of showed his true colors. Where, like you said, this isn't something he's doing to make more, more and more money. He has the money. It's it's beyond that now, and I think a lot of what he's doing, especially on the SpaceX side is doing things that he legitimately thinks will progress humanity to the next level. I mean, he was basically saying like the entire weight of this launch is, is on my shoulders. And if something goes wrong, I know I'm the one that are going to have to look those astronauts um, family in the eyes and kind of say sorry, basically. And that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself when he's not the guy in there, um, you know, screwing in the bolts and making sure that there's enough fuel and all that kind of stuff. So I thought that was pretty telling. Uh, in his interviews on, on that side to kind of see his reaction to a very uh, important launch and something that's going to, you know, it's it's not a test drive of a car, right? It's, it's much bigger than that. Absolutely. And, and to add to that, um, Musk, he would also say, like, what was driving him to bet on rockets? And, and he's already brought down the cost of space travel by so much by creating a landable rocket was that just waking up in a world every day where we're not trying to live amongst the stars and we're just sitting on this rock floating through space waiting for some extinctual event to occur it's depressing for him to wake up in a world every day where we're not trying to make this progress literally depresses him so therefore to cure his depression he needs to you know execute xyz goal so it's it's incredible absolutely incredible I'm not too involved in cryptocurrency. I I do a little bit of research here and there on, on Bitcoin itself. And I think it's kind of, in my opinion, it's stupid not to just have even the, the tiniest percentage of your net worth in it because uh, it's one of these things where it could be a massive, massive gainer for you in, in just a few years now. Um, but, you know, it could, it's one of those other things where it could probably go to zero as well. So I think it's uh, a pretty binary game um, in the long term. Well, Rich, if I, if I could say, I think it's all likely to go to zero. Um, I, and it's hard for Americans to understand it sometimes because we are prosperous. But I think there's a case where it'll it'll do well and, and we'll see crypto projects actually getting transacted more often. But if you're in like a third world country that destroys their currency and and these, these people living there, like when they wake up in the morning and they go to the store by dinner time, you know, everything's like 200% more because inflation is rampant. Um, you're gonna, these people are not gonna wanna settle for those coins. And they're not gonna wanna pay taxes these governments have been stealing from them. And you're gonna see, in my opinion, this is where you're gonna see a huge parabolic run on crypto. You're gonna see failing governments telling their people to save their currency. They're gonna buy a coin and they might buy Bitcoin, you know, because that's like the most n noticeable one. But to say, yeah, we have we have um, legitimacy. We're not overprinting. We're gonna pin to this, like almost like gold, because people can understand it and they're actually starting to transact with it. In smaller countries, they are in places and countries in Africa. It, it is being used. The infrastructure is being built. So I think it's unlikely to go to zero, and um, but we don't know if it's likely going to be, you know, a leading currency in the world. But it, it's very likely to at least grow. Like, it's, like cryptocurrency is only a $200 billion market cap total. We just watched the federal government create $2 trillion with the snap of a finger. So just to show you how big this market is and how powerful it is and how much return you could get, it's, it's like you said, it's silly not to have it in your portfolio, in my opinion. That was a really good point. So the things I haven't really thought about, I think it's easy to get 
tunnel vision um, here in the States or, or some of these more prosperous countries, right, where, yeah, we're printing off tons of money, but um, the likelihood of the U.S. dollar, at least, uh, going through those massive amounts of, of volatility like, like they might see in other countries is, uh, is very low. Um, but yeah, man, that's, that's a really good point. I'll have to look into that a little bit more. So as you can tell, he's very talented and very passionate the way he organizes his B-rolls and the clips and a very good speaker. I look forward to seeing how his podcast grows in the future and I really wanted to make sure I gave him a nice shout out for all the hard work that he did that went into that video. So next week's video, I'll be back and I'll actually be talking some real estate. A lot of people who have been on this channel for a long time know that I do like investing in real estate and I want to do an updated video to some previous videos I've been doing very well on my last real estate purchase. That I think will be very exciting. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you follow me over there. I post here pretty much daily. I put my handle here. And as always, I'll see you in my next one.